How'd you get in here? Carol Ann! My client has hired me to show you this photograph. I don't understand. My client has asked me to ensure it's the last thing you ever see. Everybody's favorite bald-headed assassin returns in Hitman Blood Money for a lot more work. The game, once again, features a great blend of both stealth-based gameplay and pure run-and-gun shooting. There are more than a dozen missions in all, and the different settings of these places definitely steal the show. You've got everything from just a Egyptian-themed Las Vegas casino to a Northern California rehab clinic and all kinds of very imaginative types of places that you don't normally see in games. This should be a straightforward operation. We need you to penetrate an abandoned amusement park, locate the owner, and take him out. The gameplay involves finding the person that you're supposed to kill, person or persons, and then killing them and then getting out. You can either do that by carefully observing your surroundings and carefully watching what these characters do and who's guarding them and so forth, or you can try to go in with guns blazing and watch what happens. Basically, the game is open-ended enough to let you first try one and then if you blow your cover, then you know resort to shooting and see how far that gets you. Uh, as a pure shooter, the game is pretty standard, but as a sneaking game, it's, it's much more interesting. There tend to be some very uh, creative ways to dispose of the characters you're trying to kill in each of these assignments. That gives the game its replay value, especially since you're ranked at the end of each mission and you even get to see a newspaper front page that's mocked up to uh, describe in, in uh, rather painstaking detail exactly what happened. But after a while, you realize that all these newspaper headlines pretty much follow the same template. One of the other new changes in Hitman Blood Money is this notoriety system. Basically, if you leave a trail of bodies in your wake and leave a whole bunch of evidence to what you just did, in the next mission you're going to be easier to detect. However, in between missions you can choose to pay a sum of money basically to wipe your identity clean and negate the entire notoriety system and this is a pretty small sum of money compared with how much you're making just by successfully completing an assignment. So it's great to have the continuity between missions but it's not so substantial that it, that it really affects how the game plays compared to the previous games in the series. It's also got these great big new environments that, that are really the star of the show. Although the underlying gameplay is very similar to the previous Hitman games, just getting to experience some of these imaginative new levels is going to be plenty uh, to give both Hitman fans and those who haven't played this series before a, a lot of stuff to remember and to play around with. The rest of the gameplay really is quite similar to what was found in Hitman Contracts and Hitman 2. Basically, you can go in with all, a whole bunch of realistic guns. You've got pistols and rifles and submachine guns and so on. But you've also got access to explosives and poisons and other good stuff like that. You can find kitchen knives, what have you. Uh, some of these things you, you might go out of your way to use just to have fun in the game's kind of open-ended environment. But really, it's up to you how you choose to get the job done. In addition to that, 47's other main ability besides killing people is his ability to change his clothing to disguise himself. Uh, this still looks and seems a little bit awkward as it has in the previous games as when his clothes just kind of magically form up in a neatly folded pile and he can change his outfit as quickly as he can reload his guns. But still, it's, it's a contrivance that helps justify how you're able to infiltrate all these buildings and kind of casually walk on by a bunch of heavily armed guards and so forth. The game performs pretty impressively regardless of which system you play it on. And if you're playing the 360 version or the PC version, you'll experience sharper textures and higher resolution graphics and that sort of thing. But even if you're playing it on the PS2 or the Xbox, you'll still be impressed with a lot of what these graphics bring to bear, especially in some of those really crowded environments. If you were choosing between all the versions and you wanted to pick one, the 360 version is the way to go, not just because it looks the best, but also because it's got some unlockable achievements in there that encourage you to play through the game multiple times and basically get the most out of the gameplay. If you've played the previous Hitman games, you'll find that Blood Money offers a comfortably familiar experience, even though some of these missions definitely feel new and, and bigger and more intricate than before. They're, they're some of the best missions in the Hitman games yet. At the same time, if you're new to the series, you're going to find a lot of stuff uh, to play around with. There's lots of dark comedy in this game uh, underneath its really serious looking tone. Uh, and really overall, this is a stealth action game that can keep you coming back quite a bit, uh, even though there, there's just the single player content to work with. 
Uh, it's not necessarily the most impressive game in the series, considering a lot of this stuff uh, we've seen before. But still, if you're a fan of Hitman, definitely check this one out.